Hi everyone, I'm Robert Horton. I'm a member of the National Society of Film Critics and programmer, historian in residence at Scarecrow Video. I'm going to keep saying that until it catches on. And I'm going to introduce one more time a movie in our current edition of Scarecrow Academy. This semester is called The Art in Horror, Horror and the Director, and we're looking at the horror film specifically through the lens of the art of directing. The uh, series is free. Um, as, you, as you probably know, we began this series actually at Scarecrow. We were gathering in person. The pandemic shut us down about halfway through, so we are continuing on online through Zoom sessions. The um, sessions are taking place on Saturday afternoons at 2 p.m. Pacific time. They are free, but you can register by um, clicking one of the links that's either above me or below me or somewhere near this, this video. It will take you to a place where we can contact you for the Zoom meeting. It will also uh, give you some information about uh, places you can stream the film in question. Or you can rent the film in question at Scarecrow and come down and pick it up at the Scarecrow window. Uh, that's, that's also a possibility. So, uh, our next session is Saturday, September 5th. We will be looking at the 1968 film Rosemary's Baby, directed by Roman Polanski, a masterpiece of horror. Uh, it occurred to me that it's very good that we're doing this over Labor Day because this film is about uh, the nightmare pregnancy in, in all of cinema. So, Labor Day. Uh, just thought I'd throw that out there, but bad puns aside, uh, Rosemary, Rosemary's Baby, I think, will provide plenty of conversation for us. It's one of those films in which every, every camera movement, every cut, uh, every, every actor gesture, every line of dialogue seems to be connected to all the other ones and it uh, it combines in a in a, in a uniquely sinister uh, purpose in this case rosemary's baby was based on a novel by ira levin popular writer of that time and it's one of those adaptations that stays very very close to the book it was some of the lines of dialogue that we remember best from this film and it has some incredibly memorable lines of dialogue are taken directly from from levin's novel which was adapted by uh, the director himself, Roman Polanski. The, um, Polanski ha has a story in his, in his autobiography. He talks about writing up his, his script, his adaptation of the book, taking it into Paramount Studios, where they, at, at that time they still had a studio set up, going up to, to an office pool or something where you could get your screenplay typed into proper format. And he took it to a woman sitting at a desk, and, and she had been there for many, many years, clearly. And he, he said, is there any way you could possibly uh, widen the margins and, and make the font smaller or something so it doesn't look too long? He, he felt he had overwritten the book a little bit in the, in the adaptation. And she, he said, uh, the woman got a kind of faraway look in her eyes and said, you know, the last person who asked me that was Mr. von Sternberg. Uh, Joseph von Sternberg being the, the great paramount director of the early 1930s who made a series of films with Marlene Dietrich and who's... Uh, stylishness and sort of autocratic behavior on the set probably limited his career to, to a fairly brief uh, time at the top. The rights of the book had been purchased even before the book was published by William Castle, a uh, producer and director who is best known for making really schlocky, uh, low-budget horror films. Usually it had a gimmick associated with them in some ways, like The Tingler, a uh, film with uh, Vincent Price where the uh, seats in the theater were wired so that the audience would get electric shocks at certain key moments, or 13 Ghosts, where you put on uh, special glasses so you could see the ghosts during the movie, or not see the ghosts, as the case might be. Castle took the product, uh, the property to, uh, to Paramount, where uh, Robert Evans was uh, a production executive there. Evans would become kind of a superstar himself as a, as a producer. Evans did not want Castle to direct, partly be because of his associations with low-budget things, but he had his eye on Polanski, who had already had success in Europe. Roman Polanski, we will no doubt talk about him uh, more in our, our Zoom session. He ha has had a very unusual, uh, rather lurid at times, life, and uh, I guess there's probably no way of getting around uh, discussing that life a little bit in our, in our uh, conversation. Uh, 1968, he was a Holocaust survivor as a child. He had uh, made a name for himself in Poland with some short films and also a spectacular debut feature in Poland, Knife in the Water, that gave him an international reputation. He made a couple of films in English at this time, notably a 1965 film 
uh, Repulsion, which would have been a great calling card for somebody wanting to make a wanted to hire a director for Rosemary's Baby because it's about a woman, Catherine Deneuve, who, who slowly goes crazy uh, within her own apartment. And clearly, this was the guy who, who should be directing a Rosemary's Baby. Mia Farrow was hired to play the, the uh, lead role in Rosemary's Baby. She was best known at that time for the TV series Peyton Place, kind of a nighttime soap opera that had, had been popular for a little bit. Also, probably, she was known for having just married Frank Sinatra uh, shortly before the making of the movie. Many of the supporting players in the film, including Ruth Gordon, who won a very well-deserved uh, Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her uh, unforgettable turn in this movie. Uh, many of the supporting players were associated with old Hollywood. They, they were of another time. They were from a different era. And that, that quality gives uh, an interesting vibe to this movie, I think. The other casting decision that is, was very important for the film is using the Dakota apartments as the setting for the movie, the uh, great uh, apartment building across from Central Park that uh, a dozen years later or so, uh, of course, would be the, the site of John Lennon's murder. Its sort of quasi-Gothic ambience uh, was just exactly right for uh, what Polanski was up to um, with this film. So in our Zoom session, we'll talk about some of Polanski's directing decisions. Uh, as you watch the film, some things to watch for are just how he uses the tools of the director to create an almost constant sense of disquiet in the film. Why the certain angles he chooses uh, create that sense. Why certain cuts are just uniquely well placed to do that. He can create that feeling in a big supernatural nightmare scene, of course. But what Polanski is really good at doing is taking ordinary life uh, a visit to the doctor's office, a uh, tour through an apartment building, um, people exchanging small talk, and finding uh, the horror that is in those, those situations. Uh, he, he, he finds everyday life uh, brimming with unease already. So, in, in the spirit of the horror of the mundane and of the supernatural, please watch uh, Rosemary's Baby before our session, and we will see you on September 5th for another meeting of uh, The Art in Horror. See you there.